Greetings, Zero here, and welcome to the beginning of what will be a series of videos in which I do a monotype run of Pokemon Eevee Emerald. I'm really rusty with recording videos like this, so please bear with me, and let me know if I need to adjust audio levels or something moving forward. This raw map can be thought of as Vanilla Plus. It just adds the ability to choose Eevee as your starter, and makes it possible to complete the Pokedex without trading. I decided that for the first one of these I should keep it simple, but later on I might play something more complex, like, say, Liquid Crystal. Anyway, first things first, let's discuss the rule set I'm using. I've done many of these over the last few years and had to make adjustments over the time. The rules relevant to Generation 3 are as follows. Rule number one, if I decide not to hack into starter of the desired type, my normal starter can be used in battle until a Pokemon of the relevant type is captured. The first Pokemon of the run must be captured prior to fighting the first gym leader. Obviously this means that for some teams I may have to cheat, but I prefer to keep that to a minimum, and if I must do this, then I'll attempt to limit myself appropriately. Of course, if my starters are the correct type for the given monotype run, this does not apply. Rule number two. A Pokemon that is not the monotype's chosen type is valid to use provided I evolve it prior to entering the Hall of Fame, or complete whatever post-game portion there is in a given game. For example, let's say I want to do an electric monotype run. I'm allowed to use an Eevee provided that I use a Thunderstone to evolve it prior to being the game. Rule number three, no duplicate species on the team by the end. I may have, say, three mod chops at one point on a fighting monotype team, but by the Hall of Fame, I must have evolved one of them into Machoke and the other into Machamp if I want to keep all three on the team. Rule number four, no more than two legendaries are permitted on the team, preferably no more than one, ideally none. Sometimes my options are limited enough that I may end up using, say, Red Gice on an Ice Monotype run. And finally, five. Obviously, HM Slaves and the like are permitted, I just can't use them in battle. If I have no choice, then I may only use non-damaging moves until I inevitably lose, or I'll just reset to before the battle depending on what happens and when I last saved. There's another rule that is unique to cast form which I'll bring up later if it becomes relevant. Also, while my intros may be scripted, this is going to otherwise be completely unscripted and off the cuff, purely stream of consciousness. So if I sound like I'm rambling at any point, that's because I am. I may also not include footage of things like grinding sessions if I need to grind, unless something interesting happens, or I just feel like talking about something with the footage as background. Did you get all that? Good, because I will not be reading this off again in every episode. Let's begin. So, the more observant among you may have realized we just skipped the first part of the intro, where you get out of the truck, you set your clock, you meet your rival, and that's because... well... <clears throat> We're not using one of the types that your starters can be. I'll show you. So here we have Professor Birch being chased by Zigzagoon. A level 2 Zigzagoon. And so, first thing you'll notice, in this hack, you can get Eevee as a potential starter. And that's the one we're going to pick. But we're not going to be using Eevee. You'll see why. So I pick Eevee, start the battle, and we send out Beldum. Yep, we're doing a Steel Monotype run. I put this up to a vote on a couple of servers, and that was the overwhelming winner. I figured, well, the thing is, we can't get a Steel type prior to fighting Roxanne in vanilla, so. I'll give myself a Beldum, because normally you can't use that till the post-game. And while powerful, it does present some challenges. One, takedown can miss. Two, you take recoil damage. And three, it's a normal type attack. And... Well, Roxanne uses rock types. Her nose pass is very tanky. I'm not looking forward to using takedown on that. I may actually have to evolve it into Matang before I could fight her. We'll have to wait and see. And you may have also noticed the name of my player character, Lemmy. After Lemmy Killmeister, rest in peace. We're going with the metal theme on the team, so... Well, Black Sabbath won't fit, so... We're gonna say... BLK... No, it, it's an A. There we go. Black Sabbath. Okay, so, now we leave the lab. Let's go north to meet the rival. 
Now, the reason I picked Eevee wasn't just for show. I picked it because, just like if you pick Trico, it gives your rival Torchic, which is going to make things a little more of a challenge for me. Not a whole lot, but it's something. And remember, takedown can miss. That's the other thing. I might as well get what experience I can, because if I recall correctly, Beldum is in the slow level up group. Consequently, it takes a lot of experience to up, level up. Grinding is going to take a long time in this run, I think, so I'm probably going to cut most of the grinding sessions, unless something interesting, like if I run into a shiny, or I just have something interesting to talk about, as I said in the intro. First, let's pick up the potion. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to need a uh, trip to the Pokemon Center. Because Takedown does enough damage that I'm pretty much guaranteed to win this unless I get mind-bogglingly unlucky. Let's see what we get this time. Another Pugiana. <clears throat> oh, by the way, Pugiana. Not a bad Pokemon early in the game, actually. Um, in Dark-type monotypes, which are really easy to do, because of this. Um... At least in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Mighty Enna is actually a very useful Pokemon, even late in the game, if you set it up right. So we talk to May. And the battle begins. So Torchic only knows Scratch and Growl at this point. I'm not at all worried. Oh, right. I forgot to box the Eevee. Because you still get the Eevee. I just can't use it to battle with. I might use it as an HM slave later, but as soon as I'm done with this, I gotta box it. Come on. Come on, don't miss on me. Remember what I said about being mind-bogglingly unlucky? Well, that could have knocked me out. If I'd missed a couple more times, I would have lost. <clears throat> and we're up to level 6. Anyway, first rival battle's over, we will pick up later. Okay, so now we pick up after I finally caught myself five Zigzagoo. Yes, for pickup. Of course, pickup has been heavily nerfed in Emerald compared to Ruby and Sapphire, but it's still useful. Occasionally you get good shit. It took me nearly 20 minutes to find those five Zigzagoo, and that has never happened before. So, needless to say, I'm going to spare you guys that. Let's just move on. And here we have our first trainer battle that isn't with the rival. So I suppose now I might want to talk about why it is I started doing this. So, it started years ago. I just got bored with some of the newer Pokemon games. I was like, you know what, I want to do something different. I want to use species that are... Well, that I don't use as much. So, I figured, you know what, I'm going to do a monotype. The first one I did was a Fire Red, and it was Poison monotype. So, start off with Venusaur, got a bunch of other Pokemon, and it, it was alright. So, after that I figured, okay, what if I beat Fire Red with every type? And so, eventually, I did. Then I decided, okay, let's do this with Emerald version. I did that. And then I went, okay, let's do this with Gen 2 and Gen 1. Did that. And then I went back to do Ruby and Sapphire because it's a little different from Emerald. Eventually, somebody in one of the Discord servers I was on was like, hey, why don't you stream this stuff? Well, first of all, I'm not a particularly big fan of streaming. I just... I would rather be able to focus on what I'm doing than have to read chat and all that crap. So, I figured, okay, well, if you really want to see how I do this, I could just record stuff ahead of time and put videos on, like, YouTube and Rumble, for example. Nah, we're good. And, uh, so, eventually, I figured, alright, 
I got nothing better to do. Let's start putting these videos together. And I asked, alright, well... I should probably keep it simple. I want to do a ROM hack, so that way it's just a little different from vanilla. But at the same time... I would also prefer to keep it... Well, I want to keep it simple. And, uh... So, I found a ROM hack online. EV Emeralds, which is what you're seeing here. And then I asked people on a couple of servers I'm on, okay, what type do you want to see? And I eventually got four different answers, which were fire, ice, ground, and steel. I put it up to a vote, and the overwhelming winner was steel. And so, earlier today, I began recording. Let's go back and heal. Yeah, that's something that's going to have to happen a lot, at least early on, because, well, recoil damage or takedown. In theory, I might have been able to beat that last trainer, but that would have required me to not miss. And considering the takedown has, I think, a 15% chance of missing its target, I'm not going to take those odds. I'm not a gambling man. All right, take on the last trainer. Yes, I'm go I'm going to be fighting pretty much every trainer I can because again, Beldum is slow to level up, and I may have to evolve it into Matang to be able to beat Roxanne just because of how tanky her uh, nose pass is. Remember what I said about takedown missing? Yeah, exactly. We're up to level 9. And it misses again. Oh, this is annoying. I can't wait to get another move. Which, of course, isn't going to happen until it evolves into the tang. I think it gets Confusion or Metal Claw. One of those. Of course, Metal Claw can miss too, but it's less likely to miss, and I get Stab. And it has a chance to boost your attack power, which is nice. And Confusion, well, Confusion's alright. Even though this is going to be mostly a physical attacker, it's not bad. Let's go get this. And we get ourselves a potion. So we finally reached Petalburg City. Let's heal. Then we will check to see if I got any more pickup items. Yep. Ultra Ball. Hmm. Yeah. I notice I tend to get a lot of those, even at low levels. So, that could be useful for catching certain Pokémon that have low catch rates. We'll see. Now, we go talk to Dad. Go figure, the first Pokemon game in which you can actually meet the player's father, and you end up having to battle him later. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and the remakes, obviously, are the only games where the player's father is present. What is it the Game Freak has against people having fathers in their lives? Seriously. And now we, uh, now we get to see Wally catch himself as Ralts. So, fun fact. Well, two of them, actually. One of them is it's entirely possible for the Ralts in this encounter to be shiny. Or the Zigzagoon that Wally got to be shiny. It's also possible for the Zigzagoon to knock out the Ralts. If it get, if the RNG is right, if Ralts has a has low defense, Zigzagoon is high attack, and it gets crits, it can knock the Ralts out. I don't know what happens if that occurs. I don't know if the game softlocks itself or just ends the battle, assuming that it got captured. We'll see. If someone actually has a recording of that happening, I'd love to see it. Hmm. 
Man, my grandma's faster than this. Come on. And now the capture tutorial is done. And I think this is where we're going to call it here, guys. So, this was the first episode of what will eventually be a series, and I'm hoping that you guys enjoy this. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you do, and I will see you all next time.